in the EU or any of their policies is now considered xenophobic. Imagine foreign Mossad and Interpol agents murdering Americans. No judge, no jury, no arrest. You're just dead and it's in the back of the newspaper. That, my friends, is what it'll be like living inside the New World Order and it's happening right now. We see CEOs, we see leaders from Mexico, the U.S., Canada, Chile, calling for getting rid of our borders, merging our social security systems and our police and military. Deals have already been signed in late 2002 for, quote, Mexican and Canadian troops to deal with American terrorists and for peacekeeping. My friends, peacekeeping is the disarmament and enslavement of the people. The New World Order also allows European Union controlled and financed corporations to buy up critical government services like waste, water, and electricity. Privatization isn't private at all. It is simply a partnership between select corporations that act more like organized crime rings or modern pirates allied with government, bringing you this tyranny. An important area of New World Order documents, because the globalists communicate with each other on a routine basis, and their writings are public, though they're not distributed widely or talked about in the mainstream controlled press that is there to distract our attention away from issues of real substance. The Project for a New American Century, founded in 1997, was run by Dick Cheney, Jeb Bush, Wolfowitz, and of course, Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld. And the Project for a New American Century called for a New World Order in its writings that can be viewed at their website. They said that there needed to be a, quote, Pearl Harbor event to speed up the New World Order and to get the American people behind a national draft and behind a war of aggression against 62 countries, a war that Bush has said will last generations. In fact, in one statement, he said 100 plus years. They went on to say that Saddam Hussein, this is in a 2000 uh, dossier they wrote up, a 2000 battle plan, that Saddam Hussein wasn't a threat, but that he provided a convenient pretext to get the oil in Iraq. But understand, the invasion of Iraq was also not just about the three to five trillion in oil or the 1.7 to 1.9 trillion occupation cost of Iraq over the next five years. It was also about setting the precedent for the New World Order to invade sovereign nations. And if you think there's some rift between Bush and the UN, Bush and Blair have already announced that the UN will control the oil, the trillions of dollars of oil that the Iraqi people truly own. So again, playing good cop, bad cop, and we have them on the record saying, think about this, that they were gonna go after Iraq, they need a Pearl Harbor event to get the American people behind it. And the military industrial complex, the CIA certainly provided that on 9-1-1, September 11, 2001. But the New World Order also goes back into history. Uh, they orchestrated World War I, and they've bragged about it. And they tried to get their League of Nations, the first UN, when that failed, they needed a bigger war, and they certainly uh, generated that with their uh, asset, Adolf Hitler, who they funded and trained. In fact, I have the news articles uh, out of large establishment East Coast newspapers from the early 1940s where the president's grandfather, George Bush's grandfather, Prescott Bush, actually was arrested and fined for trading with the enemy, running over 50% of Nazi steel production through Brown Brother Harriman. In fact, a headline on MSNBC reported that FDR's Auschwitz secret, well, I'd talked to many B-17 pilots years ago who said they weren't allowed to bomb entire factories owned by General Motors, General Electric, and Ford building panzers for Hitler's war. Why did the globalists do this? Because the bankers were funding both sides and they stood to gain and profit from a protracted war. The bankers funded Stalin, Hitler, and the United States in England during World War II. FDR's Auschwitz secret. In fact, the London Guardian reported from now declassified secret documents that Hitler saw the Duke of Windsor, the man who would be king, as no enemy, U.S. files reveal. 
Well, of course, the Duke of Edinburgh lived in Germany during most of World War II and then escaped near the end to fascist Franco Spain. The British have engineered these disasters time and time again by controlling both sides of conflicts. They take over in the aftermath. And who's one of the main banking families behind major wars going back to uh, the battle at Waterloo? The Rothschild family, the family that bankrolled Europe. And every time we investigate a major scandal or a company being uh, sucked dry before being imploded and pension funds being, being stolen, we run right into the Rothschild family, namely their British subsidiary, N.M. Rothschild. You also have the Crump family in Germany that owns many of the publishing companies in the world. They weren't prosecuted after World War II, certainly not. Their little creation, Adolf Hitler, and his minions were. And now we have the modern New World Order system. In March of 2002, I interviewed BBC reporter Greg Pallast. He said the head of M. Rothschild, Lord Wakeham, who's on the head of Britain's censorship board, was trying to restrict him from breaking the story of 1,000 plus pages of secret World Bank and IMF documents. Mr. Pallas interviewed the former head uh, economist for the World Bank, Joseph Stiglitz. The former chief economist of the World Bank, Mr. Stiglitz, reported that the World Bank and IMF planned to implode the world economy. You see, the globalists print the money. They gain their power out of creating bubbles, then bursting those bubbles, creating depressions and recessions, and getting control of assets, corporations, and private property. The globalists control the boom and bust system. IMF unveils details of a plan for international bankruptcy system. What a scam. They go into third world countries, their documents show, pay off the leadership to not pay their debts, and then to sign over the natural resources and the population themselves, as well as their public lands, as collateral on a debt that the IMF and World Bank printed up off their printing presses at absolutely no cost to them. Think about the erosion of America's sovereignty. We have Mexico going to the Hague court to intervene on behalf of Mexicans on death row in the U.S., And guess what the world court did? They told the U.S. Supreme Court to freeze Mexican executions. And guess what? The Supreme Court did exactly that. Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, oh, we uh, definitely agree that you are the authority. Already, our courts under the control of the United Nations. And we have the International Criminal Court coming to life. And it doesn't even respect the basic rights contained in the Magna Carta much less the Bill of Rights or Constitution. Meanwhile, we have the Pan-American Union forming, merging social security systems, merging law enforcement and military, as we said earlier. The EU is doing the same thing at the same time. EU poised for huge expansion to the east, 10 former Eastern Bloc nations merging with the EU, and they're quite at home in the socialist system. Another pretext the world government uses to get involved in sovereign nations is the drug war. And the evidence is clear. MI6, the CIA, Mossad, and other major intelligence agencies control the drug trade globally. In fact, after the globalists took over Afghanistan, opium production surged to record levels. That was another one of the little motives behind 911. Not just oil, not just weapon sales, not just the pretext to invade sovereign nations and empower this world government, but also uh, that key belt of opium production. In fact, uh, before 911, only about 10% of opium was being produced there with the poppies. Now it's over 60%. You know, I've been very frustrated in the eight documentary films that I've produced because I could spend an entire program just covering one aspect of the New World Order. But to understand the total enslavement system they're designing for you and your family, that we're already deep into, but it's getting worse in the degrees, you need to have an understanding of the entire system and how it fits together in this web of tyranny and slavery. A key area that we need to look at is government-sponsored terrorism. How do the globalists get us to accept giving up our liberties and freedoms. Well, it's simple. 
They scare the daylights out of us with terrorist events they create. They pose as our saviors. We go to them asking for help, and they give us solutions that get the chains more tightly fitted to our ankles and mainly to our minds. Let's look at just a few examples of this, and they are voluminous. I would just hope that everyone out there visit InfoWars.com on a daily basis uh, to see uh, even more examples of this. A long time ago in my study, I discovered that white supremacist, Hispanic um, supremacist organizations, almost all racial uh, organizations in the world are actually founded, not just funded and controlled, by the globalist, uh, by the MI6 uh, slash CIA Mossad control arm. Whether it's Hamas, which Yishak Rabin, a former, uh, he was assassinated, uh, Israeli prime minister, admitted. In fact, UPI and Reuters and Har